For today's series of videos, I apologize if my voice is not really the best. It's for a good reason, I swear. Last night, my friends and I did some living room, solo, no microphone, no speaker karaoke. And it gets pretty hectic when you're belting out Kanye West, Taylor Swift, Silk Sonic, and all that. Especially as the tenor that I am, it's very easy to get lost in the music. And with all the testosterone going on around you, it's easy to yell your voice out. And that's kind of what I did. So, boo-hoo to me. But either way, we have ourselves a conversation that I wanted to have in this video about Carey Price and the Montreal Canadiens, and what exactly the future could hold for the current Montreal Canadiens franchise franchise netminder. In order to go over this, we're going over onto this article on Montreal Hockey Now. Speculation about Carey Price's future is picking up again. This is from April 2nd. It was published by Marco D'Amico, and what Marco does is he cites the recent 32 Thoughts podcast episode where Elliot Friedman and Merrick talk about Carey Price and what they feel like his future might be as well. The links to both the article and the 32 Thoughts podcast will be in the description for your viewing and listening pleasure. But because it's easier for me to go onto the article and screenshot that, we're going to be taking excerpts from this piece and highlighting what exactly it is D'Amico has to say in this video. So, in the latest 32 Thoughts podcast, NHL insiders Friedman and Merrick speculated on what's next for the Montreal Canadiens, and more specifically, directly on the fate of Carey Price in the ongoing roster transformation. For a while now, Price's future with the Habs has been the elephant in the room, but with the NHL trade deadline passed and this season winding down, the Price speculation will only accelerate. Friedman, who is well-connected, may have kick-started that Price speculation here. If Price comes back and plays, then I think there's a chance that he's playing somewhere else next season, Friedman said. Now, that's a basic quote. I get it. It's not really the most descriptive thing in the world. It's just Friedman saying, yeah, if he does play, I think he can play somewhere else. But either way, there is an entire can of worms that is being opened with a comment like this from one of the NHL's top insiders when you sort of manifest this idea into existence here. Carey Price, as we've known, has been a franchise goaltender for the Montreal Canadiens. However, the past few years have been sort of marked by a similar pattern. Very okay in the regular season, very phenomenal in the playoffs. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't really look like the Canadians are going to be a playoff team this year. Next year, the year after that, it's up in the air. And so, for Carey Price and the $10.5 million cap hit that he does have... Not to mention the fact that that cap hit goes on till 2026, there is a conversation you can say opens itself up to Carey Price maybe opening the door to other options should he actually say, okay, I want to be competitive again, I want to play for a team that's got chances at a playoff run or whatever. That's just one angle to look at it, but we have ourselves some more comments that are written about in the piece here. If he's medically clear and feels ready to play, Montreal Canadiens GM Kent Hughes would love to see goalie Carey Price get in some action before the 21-22 season concludes. I think it's totally up to his health, he said on TSN. It would be great for the team to have Carey come back. Just that boost. It sounds like there is a real void without Shea Weber, without Corey Perry, and without your superstar and Carey Price being part of the locker room and the day-to-day. -day. So having Carey back would certainly be helpful to our group and give them hope. And so, there you go, that's the GM saying for one part that he feels like Carey Price's acceptance back into the team would be an amazing thing, but it's not even just Kent Hughes, it's also Carey himself who went out there and said, contrary to what Friedman said on 32 Thoughts, that he wants to be the Canadiens goaltender still. Being a goalie for the Habs has been my life for over a decade, it's part of my identity, he explained at his most recent press conference on January 30th. Ending the season on such a disappointing note last year, disappointing, you made the finals, bro, come on, give yourself some credit. I just want to get back in there and continue playing. And to be able to put that sweater on again is something that is keeping me motivated at this point. And so, for Carey Price, it's a difficult conversation because yes, this guy's expensive. Yes, this guy's probably not worth the money. Like, I'm gonna be honest here, 34-year-old Carey Price not playing the entire season, coming back after an entire season off, I'm not too sure that's a $10.5 million goaltender. Now, sure, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. If he comes into the NHL 
22-23 next season, and he's absolutely phenomenal. He plays to the point that he is still a top 10 goaltender in the NHL when it comes to save percentage and goals against average, and he goes into the playoffs and he steals a few games here or there then okay, that's good for him. It's just, is that scenario all too likely? Does it seem plausible that Carey Price plays like a $10.5 million goaltender between now and the end of the contract in 2026? I'd say it's a little bit less than likely, and so when it comes to Carey Price and the way that he's been trending because he is 34 years old, the contract will expire when he is 38. Oh boy, 38? You're gonna have to see some retained salary if Montreal even thinks about trading this guy away. Nobody is going to pay $10.5 million for Carey Price at full value, and a team that does is one that probably you should have been talking to already, and potentially convincing Carey to want to go to. In fact, because of the Seattle Kraken expansion thing, we know that Carey Price is in a position where he would consider waiving under the right circumstances. If there's a reasonable idea that says that he might get picked or he might get traded to somewhere else, then I think it's kind of logical for Carey Price to say, okay, well, Montreal, you don't want me anymore. You don't want me to be a part of your organization. You don't want to be giving me the crease anymore. Okay, I'll go somewhere else because... I'm Carey Price, and I'm good enough to still be an NHL-caliber guy, and I've got this money locked and loaded up, so here's my no-move, I'll waive it, and you can just send me wherever. I get it, it's probably not going to go down that easily, but Carey Price already waving for Seattle once and risking that entire thing the first time paints a picture to me that says if the Montreal Canadiens really feel like they've got a deal here for Carey Price on the horizon, if they really feel like they're close... Carey Price at the very least wouldn't be the guy to say, oh, sorry, he can't trade me. I'm not going. Like, the fact that he already exposed himself once to Seattle says to me that he actually would be thinking about the Canadians in this standpoint. It's not, oh, I have the right to go out there and stand my ground. You're not going to put me on the Seattle Kraken eligible list because I've got a no move and I'm going to put my foot down and I'm going to use it. Sure, the Montreal Canadiens pretty much did that in order to avoid Jake Allen getting claimed, and it sort of worked because there was the health scare at the same time, but the fact that Price was even willing to consider that plan, and apparently so, he was the guy that came up with the plan, you can't help but wonder if Friedman has a point here. Oh, if he plays next season, there's a chance it's for another team. Montreal has themselves an offseason here where they can really choose a direction of their team because with Marty St. Louis coming on, you know this team's going to be a lot better than they performed for the first 75% of the year. You know this team is going to have itself a lot more rejuvenation, a lot more swagger, a lot more chemistry, and a lot more freedom to just do things right. And so, if Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon believe in this team... And they say, okay, we feel like Carey might actually be able to come back. And if we want to be competitive, legitimately competitive, maybe compete for a wild card or whatever, get back to that Canadian state of wild card, no wild card conversation like they had been the past few years before the 2021 run. Maybe you say, okay, screw it. We're keeping price. We're keeping this guy because $10.5 million is already on our books. Our salary cap situation isn't really all that dire anyway. And so... Let's just say, screw it. Whatever happens, happens. And if Carey is healthy, then great. That is a Hall of Fame goaltender suiting up for us in the back once again. So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Carey Price and the future of Price and his career. Do you think he is going to be a Montreal Canadian if he ever plays in the NHL again? That is, based off of that very specific caveat, if he ever plays in the NHL again, which is not guaranteed, but Friedman has proposed the idea that if it does happen, it might not be with the Canadians, it might be with some other team. If it is another team, where do you want to see Carey Price get traded to? Where do you think the biggest return will come from? Where do you think Carey Price would actually benefit the most from getting traded to? Let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Friedman's ideas over here, what teams Carey Price could get traded to, and as well as what Kent Hughes and Price both said in the media when it comes to Price's future as well. I hope you enjoyed this British Rolls 99, and bye.